G'day, I'm Chris from Stony Creek Campers. Welcome to another episode in our How To series here. Today we're going to be talking about the power system from the roof to your batteries. We're going to be talking about the hybrids, we'll run through the 11s, the 14s, 15s, etc. But today we're going to be concentrating on the 15. Come along. All right, now we're inside the Scout 15. Before I run you through the solar from the roof down, I'll just quickly show you where they're located here inside the 15L. If it was a 15 bunk version, you're going to find the AGMs under the end of the bed. In this particular one being an L shape, they're underneath here on the couch. I'll just take these cushions off and put them on the bed. And then we can lift up this chamber here. So this is the storage box for your batteries. Down here we've got our two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Over here we've got a DC-DC charge controller and we've got a circuit breaker there, a resettable one for the Anderson plug on the drawbar, which becomes your alternator input. So with the solar on the roof, they're a flexible panel. So they come obviously across the roof, they'll come down here through what I call the umbilical cord, runs down the cabinetry, whether it's a Scout 15 bunk or the L-shape that we're demonstrating today. Basically, it's gonna come down from there and go into our DC-DC controller. Now the DC-DC is an MPPT regulator for our solar. So it's gonna capture those, uh, well the output from those panels and then convert it to a safe voltage to charge and look after your battery system. Being MPPT, it's a multi power point tracking system. So it's gonna be more economic and efficient to charge than the standard PWMs. This one here is our charge controller, our DC-DC charger. So on the front, there's a few different lights. The very first one here, if you look closely, is an image of an alternator. That's gonna illuminate when it's connected to your vehicle via the means of the front Anderson plug. The next one is your solar panels. So that's gonna have a light on it as well, and it's gonna do different things to represent different settings, I guess, on your solar panels. This one here is your state of charge, green meaning full, that will change color as your capacity drops. And then this blue one on the end here is just representing the type of uh, charger that it is that it's given our batteries I guess the type of charge so blue is lithium because we run in lithium batteries in here it's set to a lithium charge algorithm and we're looking at the display controller for the lithium batteries so this little display is going to give you a fair bit of information uh, the most critical components I guess is going to be one the amp draw and then two your state of charge so unlike uh, sorry unlike the AGM batteries Voltage won't tell you a story with lithium. So uh, it will always remain at that around about 13.2 volts until the very last minute that it is flat. Uh, so here what we're looking for is state of charge. So as I flick through these displays, you're gonna see that's our voltage, 13.4 volts. We're gonna flick through. Now we've got our state of charge. So that's represented by the corner here. It, um, it's, it's got basically SOC, so that's saying that it's at 98.8%. So 100% being full, 98.8, we're pretty much full. So as we keep flicking through, it's gonna represent the other sort of settings this has got as well. So here you can see we've got 197.7 amp hours. So AH stands for amp hours. Up the top left hand corner, you can see there's a two with a battery symbol. There's a little bit of glare on the screen from the sunny day outside today, but that's gonna basically let you know how many amp hours are remaining in our battery bank. If we push it through one more time, it's got 5.8A. So that's saying that we're drawing due to the little negative on the left hand side, we're using 5.8 amps. So if I was to go ahead here and turn off the lights, uh, we'll see that number drop down and then I'll quickly just turn the fridge off as well. So that there will probably lose the, uh, the little negative symbol. See on the left hand side that just disappeared and now we have 1.5 amps coming in. So that's gonna be from the solar on the roof. So I'll turn these items back on again. We'll be able to see that figure change to a negative again on the left. And then that will show us the, the amount of amps that we're currently drawing. It will also give you a like an hour rate up to the top there, see 247.1. So that's predicting at this rate, we have that many hours left. And as that amperage goes up, you'll see that that will change and it's a bit of a live display. 
So the most important part with the lithium controller is going to be that SOC screen. So that's going to tell you exactly what's left. Look here in a quick run through on the 12 volt control panel inside the hybrid. Up here, we can see we've got our front water tank. This is a gauge that's going to represent how much water is remaining inside that tank. We've got our rear tank and our gray water tank. As you're capturing your gray water, as you're draining out of these, it's going to start filling this one here up. If you have your valve open, obviously it's not going to fill that gauge. It's just going to be draining the contents out onto the floor. Just below it, we've got a couple of resettable circuit breakers. You can reset them by firmly pressing on the rubber boot if something stopped working. For example, if our lights were no longer working, this is going to be our first point of call. So they represent the ones below. Power is going to be your big red key. Fridge is this first one here. Socket, next one, light, next switch, and pump, the one on the very end. The way they operate is you can flick them all off, you lift them up, and then we can reset them just by lifting the switch. Whenever you're not using your van, it's always a good idea to have your water pump off if you're not with your van or if the van is stowed away at home. That way, should something go wrong, you know that you're not going to lose all your water on the floor via a cracked pipe or anything like that. So now this here is our volt gauge. You can see the red being voltage and the blue being amps you're currently using. So in the red, we can see it's at 13.4. This van is currently plugged into 240 volts, so the battery charger is keeping that topped up. If you're outside off grid on a nice sunny day, it would probably also read somewhere around 13.4, maybe even 14 as the solar MPPT controller is actually regulating that flow. Uh, once it gets dark and there's no longer a solar input, that'll probably level or flatten out to somewhere around 12.8 volts. For example, that represents a fully charged AGM. As you use it, as you consume the power via the fridge, lights, water pump, uh, those figures will obviously start dropping. So you'll see it go down through 12.8, 12.4, down to 11 volts possibly, depending on the amount of usage and how long you've been camped stationary. Basically, once you start seeing around that 11.9, that's technically getting pretty flat. So by rights, a flat AGM, I believe, is somewhere around 10.8, but somewhere around 11 is where you're going to start having problems with your fridge going into low voltage and things like that. So typically what we want to see is we want to try and stay above 11.9 volts. The bottom one represents the amount of amps you're drawing. As we turn lights on and off, that figure will rise or drop. Uh, as the fridge compressor kicks in as well, that can also rise or drop. So just on this voltage meter, another thing just to keep an eye out for, if you are reading it and it might, uh, for example, it might show 11.8 volts and like a couple of minutes ago, it might have been reading 12.4, for example, just check that the fridge compressor isn't running at that point. So as the compressor's cycling on the fridge, you're gonna get things like voltage drop, uh, which will give you a false reading. So it might say that it's down at 11.8, but as soon as that compressor stops, uh, it will bump back up again. So that's just showing a little bit of voltage drop. Um, the other part to talk about with this screen here, depending on the age of your van, you've got a little dimming button here. So it doesn't actually dim any lights, but it does turn the outside lights from white to amber. So once again, that just depends on the age of your van and whether it has this in the included model or if it's too old for that one. The little red key down here, basically that's a push and twist. So that's gonna isolate the van in its entirety. No 12 volt will work, including the fridge, lights, water pump. So. Whenever it's stored at home and you're not running your fridge 24 seven, always a good idea to turn that red isolating key off. That's going to ensure that nothing is left on and nothing can flatten those batteries until you go away for your next trip. G'day guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully I was able to teach you a couple of things about your battery system, your AGMs, your lithiums and your solar setup. Come along for the next one. Thank you.